being here. Amen. And uh, amen. we are going to begin a Bible study tonight. But I just, we've had a weird week. <laughs> amen. Started off the week with Sister Rebecca being in the hospital. Got stung by some kind of a bee over on Lake Kirby on Monday and ended up in ICU Monday night. Spent the night in ICU and we went up to see her the next evening and she was out of ICU but she was having a struggle breathing. Amen. We prayed for her and Brother Dave went with me and we prayed for her and uh, God touched her. She got up the next morning, next day. Amen. And I appreciate God. And then the very next day when she got out, Rob went in. <laughs> Amen. He got a bee sting. So I'm not sure this is going to be one of those good years for bee stings. So if you're out and about and you even have a remote idea that you might be allergic, you better be aware they're out there this year. Amen. Amen. Rob is well aware of them. <laughs> I think he was more afraid of the needles than he was of the bee sting, though. So, Amen. Amen. I, I never have bothered me too much. Bees or wasp or needles, any of that has never really bothered me a lot. But amen. I, not everybody's like that. I know there's some of these guys. I had a boy at my church who was just as tough as nails. I mean, it, he was he was a hard fighting, hard acting dude. I mean, just as tough as he could be. Old macho man in every sort of the way. But. I was climbing billboards for a living. I had my 40-foot ladder extended all the way out, leaning on the edge of a little old two-inch piece of angle iron. I climbed right on up there and tied it off, and I got on up on the billboard. He wanted to work with me for a few days, so I said, come on up, man. I could feel the ladder shaking. I could feel the billboard shaking as the ladder, as he's walking up the ladder, and then it stopped. I thought, well, he's on the catwalk on the other side, so I just looked through the billboard and she was going to say something to him and he was wrapped around that ladder like this and he was white as a sheet <laughs> amen. amen this is a deer hunter this is a guy that guts a deer you know he'll shoot him and then gut him and he's as tough as all, as nails and yet he was scared to death up there so i was like okay get on down you better do the groundwork i'm not <laughs> amen so it just people different folks have different strokes they say amen and I appreciate that God has made us different, but yet I appreciate the fact that he has a plan of salvation for everybody. Amen. That we can all come together and be a part of his church. It doesn't make no difference how you are, what you act like, what you look like, what you smell like. Amen. You can become a child of God. You can be one of his own. Amen. Hallelujah. And to be a part of his church and to be a part of a group of people that love God. Amen. Amen. My wife and I were sitting at the house of the night, so I looked up a little deal. We were kind of wanting to look at some stuff. My son had sent us a little message that said, you need to watch this little clip, little video clip somebody posted on Facebook of some Amish folks. And so we got online and we watched that little video clip. And it was a, it was a true story about some Amish people that had been... Uh, they had been what they call shunned, amen. The Amish church, when you uh, go against their doctrine, will do what they call shunning you. And that means that you, your family and all your friends turn against you and you're basically on your own. You can claim to be Amish, you still live the Amish lifestyle, but nobody won't have anything to do with you. And we got to watching that. And this group of young ladies met with these two Amish ladies, this Amish lady and her husband. Uh, they had a little prayer group going together and uh, they came to meet in that room that they had behind their house where they would have their church at and uh, the way the Amish work is they don't have church but once every they have church every other Sunday and the Sundays in between you have church at your house and so the church moves around the community each person in the community has a church or a building behind their house that the church can meet in so they go from house to house with the church uh, so these little these gals when they came in i looked at my wife i said they were dressed like amish but i said there's something different about them i believe they've got the holy ghost and before the film was over the guy said yeah we're not even he said the reason we are allowed to be filmed or agreed to be filmed is because we wanted to get the message out 
that Jesus' name baptism is the right way to go. We can feel with the Holy Ghost. And I was like, wow. Amen. So these Amish folks have seen the light. And uh, amen. They're just, it's reaching into the Amish community. It's so awesome. Amen. To see God working in that group. Uh, if you know much about the Amish and the Mennonites and the Hutterites, Hutterites they all came from the same background. Uh, they're from German descent, and uh, they still speak the German language. Think about their churches are they're dead because they still they read the German Bible, and nobody nobody ever understands it. <laughs> so, and not even the priest that reads it understands it. So it's just they go to dead church, and they said. But we knew there was more to church than this, and we found out that Jesus really is alive and well. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad that I know he's alive and well. I mean, I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to start. I wanted to do some, some Bible study and go back and maybe teach a little Bible history and uh, dig into some things that, I, you know, it's not going to be a big asset to you probably. Um, but yet it might be, amen, because there's a lot of good stuff to dig out of these things. If you would, just turn with me to First Kings. You don't have to stand because we're just going to read a scripture or two at a time and, and kind of go over the scriptures. And uh, I'm just going to put some thoughts in on each, each of these. Amen. First Kings chapter 1, and I, I love the book of Kings and I love the book of First and Second Chronicles. If you're a history person... Amen. Now, my wife can get into there and she can get bored real fast and get bogged down in there. And they start all the genealogies and stuff. She told me today, she said, I'm still in the genealogies. Will I ever get out? <laughs> Just keep reading. You will get out. Amen. But I promise you, uh, there's a lot of information in here that's good information. Amen. So 1 Kings chapter 1, now, David, now King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Wherefore his servants said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord the king a young virgin, and let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom, that my lord the king may get heat. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coast of Israel, and found Abishag, a Shunammite and brought her to the king and the damsel was very fair and cherished the king and ministered to him but the king knew her not now you gotta understand at this point in life David is approximately 70 years old amen he had been a valiant man he had been an active man he had been a businessman but now age has crept up on him now a lot of folks at 70 years old are just getting started. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know some 70-year-olds that are, are like 20-year-olds. They just go and go and go and go. Amen. But then there are some like David who was so active in his younger years that he literally wore out his body. So we're at this age of his life where he's starting to wear down. Amen. Many at that age are lively and fit for business, but David is chastised, being chastised for his former sin, especially the matter of Uriah. Remember Uriah? Uh, David lusted after his wife. He was, she was taking a bath on a rooftop, and uh, or David was walking on a rooftop, and he started taking a bath over in her yard, and so uh, he lusted after her and had her brought in. Amen. And, uh, then he had a baby by her out of wedlock, and so uh, he fell into sin. And, uh, of course, God punished him for that. Immediately he felt the punishment of that. When the old prophet Samuel came and pointed his finger on his nose, put his finger on the end of his nose, Nathan, I'm sorry, not Samuel, Nathan, came and pointed his ugly finger on the end of his nose and said, You are the man, David. You're the one. Uh, that has fell into sin. You're the one that has caused all this problem. And so now, at the end of his life, amen, he has been chastised and has lived a, a hard life and uh, things have been hard for him. Even though he was very wealthy, at the same time, you know, a lot of things in his family and his life went wrong. Amen. So, let not the strong man glory in his strength, which may soon be weakened by sickness, or at last will we be weakened by old age. Let young people remember the Creator in the days of their youth. 
Amen. So that's why it's important for our young folks, amen, to get a hold of God while they're young. Amen. Because you don't want to live that old hard life and then by the time you get to be old and not realize you need God and you turn your heart to God, by then your body is so racked with pain and so racked with trouble and turmoil from those days that you could have been serving God. Amen. I attribute my, my good health over the years, uh, over the last several years, to the fact that uh, as, a, as a teenager, I found the Lord, and I've always lived for God. I've never drank. I've never smoked. I've never done any of those things. No, none of those vices have ever been in my life just because I found the Lord early on. Amen. So it's a good thing, amen, to find the Lord in the days of your youth. Now, the Bible said that they found Abishag, a Shunammite, and they brought her to the king. Now, Abishag, whose name means my father wanders, was a Shunammitess from Issachar. Because of the feebleness of King David, his physicians recommended a, visit, a fresh young maiden be found to cherish him. This was a treatment implying that through physical contact she could give David the advantage of her superabundant vitality. Abishag was chosen for the task with great care on account of her virginity, her youth, her beauty, and her physical vigor, and as a practical nurse for the aging king. The prescribed method was not successful, for David soon died after Abishag was, had taken on her duties. That Abishag was married to David before she lay with him and was his secondary wife appears from its being looked on as a great crime to Adonijah that he desired to marry her. This is in 1 Kings 2.22. We'll get into that after a while. After his father's death. I'll go to verse 5. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. Now, you got to understand, God has a plan. And uh, we... Sometimes folks try to alter the plans that God has. And uh, Adonijah had it in his mind and in his heart that he was going to be king. Amen. He, he uh, exalted himself and he said, I will be the king. And he prepared chariots and horsemen and 50 men to go before him. His name means my Lord is Jehovah. He was the fourth son of David by Haggith, who was the fifth wife of David. He was born in Hebron while his father was the king of Judah, uh, around 1050 B.C. After the death of his three brothers, Amnon, Shileab, and Absalom, he became the eldest son. Amen. And his father, verse 6, had not displeased him at any time in saying, Why hast thou done so? And he also was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after Absalom. Now Matthew Henry says in the commentary, Amnon and Absalom had both caused David much grief, the one his firstborn, the other his thirdborn. His second, whom he had by Abigail, he had comfort in. His fourth was Adonijah. He was one of those that were born in Hebron. We have heard nothing of him till now, and here we are told that he was a comely person, that he was next in age, as it is proved, next in temper to Absalom, and further, that in his father's eyes he had been a jewel, but now had become a thorn. Amen. You've got to get over this. Uh, sometimes children just begin to turn as they grow older. Amen. Towards uh, the bad side of life for some crazy reason. Amen. They, they get their own ways. That's why I, I can't stress enough how important it is to raise up your children, amen, in the admonition of the Lord and uh, to make sure, amen, that they go to church, to make sure that they hear the word of the Lord, amen, that you put stuff into them, you live in front of them. We live like we want our children to live, amen, and we live like we want our grandkids to live, amen, because we're training grandkids just like right along beside your mom and dad, amen. All right, his father was fond of him. He had not displeased Adonijah at any time. It is not said that he never displeased his father. It is probably that he had done so frequently. Amen. Had a little bit of that. And his father was secretly troubled at his misconduct and lamented it before God. But his father had not displeased him by crossing him, denying him anything he had a mind to do, 
or by calling him to an account as to what he had done and where he had been, or by keeping him to his book or his business or reproving him for what he saw or heard or what he did amiss. He never said to him, why hast thou done so? Because he saw it was une uneasy to him, and he could not bear it without fretting. It was his son's fault that he was displeased at reproof and took it affront, where, uh, whereby he lost the benefit of it, and it was his father's fault that because he saw it displeased him, he did not reprove him. In other words, what he's saying is, the reason that Ab Adonijah was turning out like he was is because uh, dad didn't like to punish him. Amen, because it displeased his son and he didn't want to hurt his feelings, so he uh, didn't punish him, he didn't reprove him. And now he justly smarted for indulging him. In other words, now he was taking it all back, it was all coming back to haunt him. Amen, because Adonijah was trying to step up into a place that did not belong to him. That was a place that God had already assigned. Amen, and, and God had a man that was going to be stepping in to that place and uh, that man was going to be the king. God had already chosen that king. Amen. Uh, it was David's son. Amen. But it was not Adonijah and it wasn't Absalom. Amen. And he conferred with Joab the son of Zariah and with Abiathar the priest and they followed Adonijah, following Adonijah, helped him. But Zadok the priest and Benaniah the son of Jehoda and Nathan the prophet, and Shimei, and Rei, and the men which belonged to David were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah slew sheep and oxen and fat cattle by the stone of Zoheleth, which is by in Rogel, and called all his brethren, the king's sons, and all the men of Judah, the king's servants. Amen. Let's read on. But Nathan the prophet, and Benaniah and the mighty men and Solomon his brother he called not. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba the mother of Solomon saying hast thou not heard that Adonijah, Adonijah the son of Haggith doth reign and David our Lord knoweth it not? Now you got to understand God has spoke through Nathan that Solomon is the one that is going to succeed David. Now therefore come, let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel that thou mayest save thine own life and the life of thy son Solomon. Go and get thee in unto King David and say unto him, Didst not thou, my lord, O king, swear unto thy handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? Why then doth Adonijah reign? Behold, while they were yet talkest, there with the king, I also will come in after thee and confirm thy words. And Bathsheba went in unto the king in the chamber, and the king was very old. And Abishag the Shunammite ministered unto him. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. And the king said, What wouldest thou? And she said unto him, My lord, thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And now, behold, Adonijah reigneth, and now, my lord, the king, thou knowest it not. And he hath slain oxen, and fat cattle, and sheep in abundance, and hath called all the sons of the king, and Abiathar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host, but Solomon thy servant hath he not called. Art thou my king, my lord, O king, the eyes of all Israel upon thee, that thou shouldest tell them, who shall sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise it shall come to pass when my lord the king shall sleep with his fathers that I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. And lo, while she yet taught with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. And they told the king, saying, Behold Nathan the prophet. And when he was coming before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, hast thou said... Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne, for he is gone down this day, and has slain oxen, and fat cattle, and sheep in abundance, and hath called all the king's sons, and the captains of the host, and Abiathar the priest. And behold, they eat and drink before him, and say, God save King Adonijah. Adonijah made a fool out of David. Because he was old, he couldn't get out of his bed. No one thought, or he thought that no one would be watching him, and therefore he 
exalted himself. Amen. He put himself on up into that position and said, I will.